If you've been following my work for any real amount of time, whether on Instagram or on YouTube, you'll know that I'm not really the guy who's telling you to buy more things. And the reason for that is because I don't think what makes you valuable as a creator, DP, filmmaker, whatever, is the gear you have, but rather your ability to use whatever you have at hand. See, every film set or video or edit I've been a part of, there's just so much DIYing that goes on because inevitably you're gonna run into issues and you're gonna have to make the most of it. While it's true that moving your camera is one way of adding interest and emotion and whatever to your video, there's so much you can do with just a static camera and just a good idea. And now, with all that said, welcome to my oh, final like, cut, adjustment layer, layer positing, and not that interesting <laughs> shot, kind of cool, I think, tutorial. Was it rolling? <laughs> Almost everything in today's video hinges on this one primary editing technique or editing element known as an adjustment layer. Now, if you don't know what this is, an adjustment layer is somewhat self-explanatory. It's a layer that you would place above your video, above your titles, above really anything on the timeline that you choose. And on that adjustment layer, you can add color correction and LUTs, or you can add scaling, you can add blurs, really any effect you could add to a clip, you can add to this adjustment layer, and it will apply those effects, those adjustments, to everything on the timeline beneath it. The technique I want to talk about today actually opens you up to a whole new world of creative possibilities. I don't know. There's just a lot you can do with it. I could have probably one shot where I like come down this and drop out of frame and then like my head pokes up within the cave. Um, let's go check that out. The technique that I want to teach you today is actually using those adjustment layers to either hide a cut within a clip or to hide composited elements within a clip. This is something that you've seen a lot without even knowing it. If you've ever seen Zach King's videos, at their core, the most simple version of his visual techniques can be broken down into this. By taking a completely static camera like this, you can pull off an effect just like this. If we backpedal just a little bit, this is all that happened. The camera didn't move. I shook my hand once. I tried to stay still. I put this in my hand. I shook it again. Now, you can hide that in just a hard cut, and that's probably fine. But by applying an adjustment layer above those two clips, and perhaps adding a little bit of an organic camera shake over top of just that cut, it helps it feel as if someone's actually operating the camera and some magic has happened. It really aids you in hiding the cut. This is an effect that I've used in a lot of my YouTube videos, and and even more of my edited Instagram stories, and I thought maybe I could break down some of those effects for you. A week or so ago, I uploaded this one wheel pint video, and I made this opening sequence that was pretty fun and was definitely a collaborative effort between me and some of my studio mates here. And the basics of this are the same. It's one completely locked off shot that doesn't move, and then I'm using adjustment layers to digitally push in and pull back, making it feel like an organic camera movement, which is helping hide some of those cuts. The process to make this was slightly more complicated though because we had an extra visual effect, but there was also just a lot of masking going on. So here in this shot, as I kick the box out of the way, or as I pull the second box out of the way, you see the element beneath it move. And it's really actually quite simple. Beneath that clip, I filmed the shot of me physically moving the item, and then I've simply masked a hole, basically, cutting out a hole of the video um, where you can now see that bottom layer beneath it. And again, because the camera isn't moving at all, those shots are gonna line up perfectly and as long as I keep myself out of those frames, it cuts together really well and then by adding those adjustment layers and adding the digital pushing and pulling, it just helps sell this whole visual effect, making it a lot of fun. When I reviewed the EOS R, I had an opening sequence of me basically setting up the lighting for that opening shot. And you see me pushing open this big storage closet on the right and grabbing a light from the left, coming out from behind the wall, all while the camera is pushing in and pulling out to hide the cuts and the mask lines that I've used to composite those shots together. It's the exact same idea that I used in the intro to this video. However, with this one, I had the foresight to film a bit of the behind the scenes of setting up that shot. So here's us figuring that shot out. No, no, 
no, no, no, no, no, no. There goes my one wheel. Come on! Just what? Twice? Moment of truth. Still works. Oh, this is nice. I'm looking for a composition where basically there's gonna be a lot, I'm gonna take this off, a lot of opportunities for me to like be in different spots in the frame. And I think I found the spot by uh, dropping my one wheel into it. Oh, there's so many mosquitoes, so that's, that's also a positive. You're gonna wanna find a spot with a lot of mosquitoes. Yeah, like this is quite a nice little shot. It was an opportunity for me to like come down the rocks and come out from the cave and disappear at the bottom, I think. Yeah, let's set something up. The simplest version of this technique involves you not having the camera move at all. Because that way, when you're stitching them together, there's not gonna be, you know, parallax and whatnot uh, issues in your clip. I like to have a tripod, but sometimes I'll actually just, you know, balance my camera or my phone on some rocks, on my backpack I do quite a lot. For today, I brought a tripod because I'm gonna shoot it on the C200 and I uh, don't really wanna drop that like I dropped the one wheels. Yeah, I'm gonna put this in 4K60 so that way I can crop and like slow down parts of it. That way if I accidentally fall down these rocks I can just like have that in slow motion. I made this mistake while uh, doing a version of this in my studio while cleaning it up which is that I had the shot wide open and autofocus was on so at different points in the composition the background blur would be changing. It totally messed my stitch lines and also my shutter speed meant the lights were all flickering which messed my stitch lines. So now I know, turn off my autofocus, have it at like F5 right now. Should make sure that I'm always in focus and it's always, you know, reasonably uh, real good. I don't know, usable. The lighting is nice here. Yeah, I just need to know like where in that camera I, I can kind of like come in and out of frame. Well, I want some space on that particularly because I don't want too much distortion on the edge of the frame if I do punch in. And then when I come down here, like if I come down like with some relative speed, when do I leave frame? Your, your feet are out of frame now. You, your back is in frame. Your head is in frame. <laughs> Darn it. Do you think there's a spot like up on here that we could get the camera higher? I just don't know if it's worth the risk. Okay. Oh, hold on. If there's stuff over here, like... Like shoot longer? Yeah, if I went to a longer lens and like shot, the like... Like 24 105 on the R. Well, even the, if I went to 20 on that... I mean, the higher the camera gets, the more this is going to look tall. It's not going to look like you're looking up at something. It's going to feel like, like a good flat wall. Cameras are set up. They're rolling, so we don't have to do that stupid hike again. Hello, cameras! Alright, I'm going to put my lav mic on just so the audio sounds good. And then, uh, let's try and do this. Oh, this actually could be kind of cool. So if I like walk to frame here, give the first sentence, and then maybe even like jump down to here, um, then with that jump, the camera can kind of like digitally whip down and it'll be down there where you are. I'm just trying to figure out right now um, how much I can move within the frame because I don't wanna have to crop in like 500% because I'll lose a lot of quality. Oh, do you know what I could do actually? Rather than physically jump down to there, I can just say the thing and then just like jump up and go like that. Cause then the shot can like lock with me and then like throw itself down to there. What I'm saying is like, I don't want to see my feet just randomly disappear when the camera whips down. One of the things that we did for the pint video is that Josh was operating the camera and we basically had one composition for 11 millimeters and then one for 20. Yeah. And so it made us, it made it look like we could zoom in and out a lot further. But it's just like some of the parts we had all the way out at 11 and we knew we wouldn't have any cuts while there what's while it's zooming oh do you know we could actually do okay so it's like i'll do the jump down right and that'll go to me here and i'll be like holding a rock down there this will be a bit tricky because what i have to do is like throw it up to me like i want to actually physically throw the rock up to me exactly so i'd be down there and i'd throw it yeah i think we can do that i'd love to like finish it also like but like a wide shot where like all four of the me are in it 
like all saying the same thing at the same time, like one pull back. <laughs> Do you know you're gonna kind of find I don't know what this video is gonna be called. So I can just say like four kind of different versions of roughly what it is and then be like tutorial. One of the things I love so much though about this technique is that the possibilities are really endless. You can use it to just multiply yourself in a frame and give it some digital shake so that it feels like a single shot. But you can also use it for much simpler effects. And to further break down some of these ideas, we've teamed up with the sponsor. All right, whatever. If you've seen my videos, you know who I'm talking about. Today's sponsor is Storyblocks. Storyblocks is an awesome stock footage subscription website, but it's so much more than that. They also have music and sound effects. They have After Effects templates and textures, graphics, all sorts of elements in order to help your production along. And in a very simple but very helpful way, I wanna show you how you can use stock footage to either fix or enhance your existing footage. Here's a shot I took on my EOS M50. And it, that camera doesn't have great dynamic range, so it's not uncommon that you may have completely blown out the sky. Now you can either just live with those clipped highlights or you can try and grade them in a way so that it just becomes yellow. But something else you could do is you can go to Storyblock's website and pull up some different skies. You could find a sky on there from literally any time of day from probably anywhere in the world. So I've pulled up a few and I just wanna show you what they look like. Bam, sunset. Bam, a different sunset. Bam, bow, more sunsets. Yeah, now it's nighttime. How did I do that? Story blocks. So by masking in or luma keying in that new sky, adding the adjustment layer over both the sky and the ground elements, you can add an organic camera shake and it's gonna match up perfectly those two layers and everything's just gonna feel like but also, like, you're smart, you're creative. I bet you could think of a million different things you could do by blending or keying or masking together some of these visual elements into your shots to enhance them. All right, if you have enjoyed this video, if you felt like maybe you learned something new or maybe you've been inspired to try something new, I would really appreciate a like, a thumbs up on the video. I'd love if you would subscribe, you know, hit the bell thing so that you actually get the videos. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear ideas from you about how you could see incorporating these techniques into a shot or if you've done something like this before, send it to me on Twitter. I love Twitter. Two quick updates. One, I fly to Japan in a couple of hours. And two, this camera's been here the whole time, just for audio.